Welcome to day two of the course. I'm overcompensating with energy because yesterday was Canada Day and I drank a little bit too much. Uh, today I'm wearing my Taco Cat t-shirt, which is very important. Um, you really only need two things to become a professional wedding photographer. That first thing is a Taco Cat t-shirt. The second thing is a golden watch. Also, Taco Cat is a palindrome, which means it's spelled the same way forwards as it is backwards, which is very exciting and useful information for you becoming a professional wedding photographer. Today's video is about photographing your first wedding, and uh, I'm gonna do this video as fast and efficiently as possible because I think that that's kind of how I go about the wedding day, that I want the wedding day to be about the actual wedding and the couple, not to be just a full day photo shoot. So get married for the getting married part and um, have the photos there to complement that rather than the other way around to get married to have pictures taken. Hopefully you understand what I'm saying. So my first tip um, is some of these are going to be pretty basic. You're probably going to know these. Some of them are going to be a little bit different. Hopefully uh, at least you pick up a few things from this. Number one is to use Google Maps for everything or Waze or whatever works best in your local area. Having live traffic has been the number one thing that's calmed all of my fears about being a professional wedding photographer. That was the only thing that week after week was like that unknown. It's like, oh, if I get on the 403, is it going to be like a dead stop because it's a Friday wedding is going to be closed. Um, things you can't control, now you can predict the future uh, like magic. Even if I'm going to a local wedding, I'm still using that to make sure that I know exactly what I'm getting myself into and if there's a better way to go. My second tip is to rent gear that you don't have, that your first few weddings are what is going to kind of set the tone for your portfolio. So you really want to knock them out of the park as best as possible. I would take a net profit of zero in order to really, really do my best possible work at those first few weddings, which means renting a 7200 if you don't have one. I'm renting better camera bodies, uh, renting backup equipment so you have backups of backups of backups. That is the other most important thing about photographing a wedding is that I want to have backup cards, I want to have backup gear, I want to have maybe a backup human, a second photographer, I want to have a backup car if possible, I want that second photographer to be in a different car just in case anything happens. All of these levels of backups um, make my mind a lot more at ease and mitigate the potential risks of anything actually happening. This is a good bump. To go beyond that a little bit, um, to shoot in-camera backups, to shoot two cards, uh, rent a body that has two card slots if you possibly can. I am also a believer in shooting larger cards, so I have 128 gigabyte cards um, because I am way more terrified of losing a card wallet or losing a single small SD card um, if I'm trying to spread the risk of this out over um, a bunch of different cards. I would rather have two cards in my camera and just hold on to that camera all day. Another important thing is to get your bride and groom or groom and groom or bride and bride. Um, I haven't had any three person weddings yet, but I have had twins getting married to two different um, brothers at a wedding once, which was pretty cool. Um, get them to write all the family photos that they actually want to have. Um, this takes a lot of problem solving and decision making off of you on the wedding day. And if you know exactly what they request and what they desire for the family photo section, it makes it a lot easier. It also kind of interrupts the process of if an aunt or somebody kind of senses that, oh, maybe you don't 100% know what you're doing, um, that they're gonna step in and start like planning photos that the couple maybe they don't want. So if you have a list that really speeds the process up and keeps you focused. If you wanna get even more in depth into that, um, there's lots of photo lists that are like the must have photos for wedding photographers if you print that out and just check things off as you go. But I think the most important part is just being aware of everything that's happening. If there's a tie clip uh, that you're taking pictures of that tie clip, the cufflinks, just every small detail of the wedding, make sure you get a shot of it. And the best is to always get a shot of it in action um, on the actual wedding day rather than just posed, I think. Um, that's my personal take on it. I like candid um, real life moments rather than just kind of like that forced stage product photography. Um, so I will take a photograph of the guy's watch while he's like looking at his watch or uh, moving it in bow tie like that rather than just sitting on a bed somewhere. There are only really three photos um, that in my early days I ever missed or didn't focus on getting the absolute perfect one. That is a boring full length shot of the couple smiling facing the camera, uh, a shot of the bride looking at the camera smiling and a shot of the back of the bride's dress um, looking over her shoulder kind of back at the camera. Um, those are the shots that the parents and the family want um, as well as maybe a portrait of the groom too but I've outside of that it is very very rare for me to get an email of um, a mother or somebody just asking like about specific photos as long as you include those ones because those are the ones that are going in frames that are going on desks that are going on mantles um, so make sure you get those 100 percent of the time making a turn in my taco cat t-shirt my friend lives in this building you didn't need to know that kitty kirk what's up another thing that i do a lot is uh this is tim's house by the way if you ever want to know where tim lives he lives right there. I don't even know if you can see it. Another thing that I do at every single wedding is I take photographs of people's cards. So if a makeup artist is there, I don't take the card because I lose paper. I take 
physical images on my phone. So when I get home from the wedding day, I have a selection of all of their cards um, or I'm adding them to Instagram and then I go back and I screenshot the uh, my most recently searched and added um, to the wedding day so that when I do the blog post, I can tag all the vendors, get all the reshares from all the vendors. And I also know who to send them to because I find that being a wedding photographer in the beginning, um, the biggest part is networking and showing these vendor relationships and that you're trusted and that you've worked with people and that people trust you and that is the easiest way to build expert status and authority in your local area. Another thing that's really important to me is actually um, backing up things offsite as fast as physically possible. So find whoever your offsite backup storage solution is, whether it's uh, Dropbox or SmugMug or uh, Pixie Set or Amazon Drive or Google Drive or whatever, just get those images into the cloud as fast as you possibly can. I also import everything to two drives and I do that task separately and full manual that I'm grabbing the folder and dragging it over um, just in case anything were to happen that I lose like a section of photos or a section of cards that I have two very distinct backups, which is very, very important. Another thing that I really like to do is I leave the couple, um, the bride and groom prep area early when possible. Um, I know that this isn't always a hundred percent of a possibility um, because things run long hair and makeup sometimes run long um, but when I can I try to leave 20 minutes early um, from the bride's house or the groom's house just so I can get to the ceremony and ask the officiant or the minister or the pastor or the um, rabbi or whoever as many questions as I possibly can um, usually they just answer everything if I'm like are there any surprises um, and if it's uh, a ceremony that maybe I haven't done before I just ask them to kind of run me through the process and they are more than happy to do that because they know by telling you um, what is happening that you're not going to be running around like a mad person um, interrupting their ceremony. I am always on a 7200 during the ceremony unless it's a very, very strange condition um, so that I can be kind of in the back rows so that I'm not interrupting anything. I never go on any stages. Um, I never shoot over people's shoulders. I just hang out and am as respectful and um, quiet as possible during ceremonies. All right, we're going to wrap this video up and I'm going to get my coffee um, in me finally. And the last tip is all right i got two more um the last the second last tip is to just understand that you're going to be solving a lot of problems um, also drink water that's a sidebar tip um, understand that you're going to be solving a lot of problems uh, whether it is a logistic problem a gear problem or an actual photographic problem that you're just in a situation that you had no idea that you were going to get yourself into. Just know that you're going to be solving lots and lots of problems. So the more things that you can possibly plan for, uh, whether that's printing out an actual, a bunch of photos that you want to replicate or um, just coming up with a list of things and pre-location scouting and solving as many of those problems as you possibly can before you go to the wedding day um, will help your mental stress and stability throughout the wedding day and let you create the best possible work all day. And the last tip that I have for you for your first wedding is to be happy because if you're the happy wedding photographer um, that's having fun with the couple, even if you're mentally stressed out of your mind, but you just put on like your vendor happy face and you're just having a great time with everyone, that is how you're going to get referrals. That's how you're going to get great reviews. It is truly a reflection on um, when the couple actually gets the gallery on how much they like their photos, how much they like you is a huge part of how much they like their photos. So make sure that you're a good person on the day, that you're polite to all the guests, that you are respectful to the ceremony, that you're respectful to everyone that's there and you will have a great and wonderful wedding photography career. Thank you for joining me in the car today. Don't forget to get your gold watch and your Taco Cat t-shirt and you will be on your way to success in no time. I will see you tomorrow for day three of the wedding photography course.